went to a field shoot on um, Sunday and one of the guys expressed an interest in a U primitive like the one I was shooting. I actually shot the one I'd made as a hole in the upper limb. Anyhow I've got this nice stave of English U with a lovely thin sapwood layer. Not without a couple of areas of concern but I don't think there'll be a problem because uh, they're sort of well down in the wood and that would be a nice character feature on the back but we'll see. I'll just run it through the bandsaw, rough it out, see what the wood looks like inside. I want it about 64 inches overall so I'll cut it at 65, allow a bit extra which is my way. Just run a string line down it and just very loosely marked it out to get rid of some of the bulk. That's the bow I was talking about that I shot on Sunday. And you can see the advantage of effectively copying a bow if you like. You're using one as a guide for what the next one's going to be like. Now I'd normally rough out a lot more heartwood than this. You know I'd leave the bow a lot thicker but seeing that bow I don't need a lot of thickness so I'm going to be quite drastic and and saw off a lot of this heartwood. There are some cracks and splits in the stave that I want to see if I can remove straight away. Well, they're mostly showing on the other side. But the danger if you try and rough it out too close is that you saw to that line, but when you turn it over you find you've come out too close to the sapwood. So I'll saw it at an angle take off a corner, mark it out and do the same the other side. I'll be left with a ridge down the middle that I'll um, then remove. Uh, here you can see the cracks that I'm keen to get out. Because it's a flat bow there's a lot less a lot less heartwood. In fact if I cut somewhere in it along this line I'll be fine. And I've just done one limb but it's a nice illustration of how that technique of sawing sort of diagonally from one side then from the other allows you to compensate for this sort of peculiarity in the wood where I'm following the grain here, the curve of the wood, but the other side didn't have that feature at all. You know, slow and steady, even with a power tool, you've still got to be careful and patient. This is still way overweight, this would be, it's barely going to flex. But once I get it roughed out, I can start seeing how it moves. I'm not going to take the bark off. As I start flexing it, the bark will pop off on its own. And that's the big advantage of having a, a stave like this with thin sapwood. It will just save me an awful lot of work. Uh, there'll be some tricky bits still, and this feature is going to be interesting. Get on with the second limb. Look everybody, I am a flying cat. Wee! There, it's sort of fully roughed out. I even cut away a little bit by the grip, just to give me an idea. I don't normally take off too much. The main reason is to try and expose some of these drying checks and cracks. But like this, the limb will be a lot thinner there, so that will disappear. A lot of it will disappear. I can barely flex it. If I lean my whole body weight on it, I can just make it flex a tiny bit. I can feel the bark trying to pop off. But you can see, obviously, areas like this, it's very thick. So I've got to do a lot of tidying with a draw knife, just trying to get it down to rough proportions so I can then get it on the tiller and flex it and see what happens. And the more wood I remove, hopefully we'll get to the bottom of, you know, where some of these cracks disappear too.